Hey everyone, this is Ricky with Spoiler Force Podcast, courtesy of Poplock Podcast. You can find more episodes of Spoiler Force Podcast on Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, YouTube, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Podcast. Alright, so this is the eighth episode of Spoiler Force Podcast. My name is Ricky. And uh, thank you for listening. Uh, Today is June 22nd. I went to the United uh, Hmong Sports Tournament and Festival. Um, That uh, usually is just a um, gathering for like uh, Hmong restaurants to go and uh, set out like food food tents. And uh, people who sell material or clothing to set up tents for that as well. And uh, for all the athletes who are in like the community the community sports like flag football, volleyball, um, soccer, and a bunch of other sports. Um, I went there today to um, promote my podcast. Um, Yeah, it was pretty, uh, (laughs) it was pretty nerve wracking. I never really go out and uh, do this kind of thing on my own. Yeah, because for those of you who don't know me well, um, even though I may seem really outgoing and talkative, for me to actually just break out of my shell to talk to people is very hard. Um, you could put me in a room full of people and I wouldn't talk to them unless someone spoke with me or unless I was with someone I was comfortable with, which is usually right. Which is usually why I tend to hang around with people I know before I go out to like parties and stuff or gatherings. Because if if I'm there and I don't know anyone, I won't speak. And then I have like this resting what you could what you would call a resting bitch face i know it's weird that i have one and uh but i do and i have like this really stern look you know like this don't mess with me kind of look um i try not to put on that face so much it 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 helps in the long run because um you know when there's people i don't like that's at certain events i just wear that face and bam they're gone but you know it sucks because i don't have many friends because of that but uh anyway yeah, I, um, I, I actually had to talk to people today and hand out cards. And usually I do that at Comic-Cons. Um, it's easier at Comic-Cons because no one knows you. Or at least like you're in a community where like you all like the same thing. Um, I don't Honestly, I don't hang around with that many, I guess you could say, Hmong people or any Asian people too often. Um, I don't know. I've always felt like I kind of I like just stood out a little bit. But, you know, that's that's just me. Um, yeah, but before I get into more details of what I did today, um, I did want to shout out the uh, HASA uh, group that I met today at the uh, sports tournament and festival. They're a uh, MSU, you know, shout out to White and Green. Uh, they're an MSU, fa- uh, not fan group, but they're an MSU Asian club. Um, they were selling t-shirts and doing a fundraiser. Um, their shirts are $15. I've mentioned this in my video and one of my posts earlier today. So check that out. Facebook.com slash Um, yeah, check out that video. I ha- I actually have like a visible, like you can see the actual shirt in that video. Um, but yeah, the shirt's $15. The ladies there were nice. Uh, shout out to Samantha, uh, Julia and, um, Mikea. I think that's their names. Sorry if I get it wrong or if I spelled it wrong on the uh, post on my Facebook page or on the Poplock page. Um, but yeah, they were super cool. You know, they were just doing their thing and uh, really outgoing, really nice people. Um, so hopefully they kind of spread the word about Spoiler Force. You never know, man. Hopefully they do. And to everyone who received my uh, business cards, hopefully you share that. And when you do listen to my content, maybe you can resonate with my content and hopefully you like it and share it. Um, and shout out to the Street Kings Rolled Ice Cream, uh, tent or that group slash company because, um, their ice cream was super good. Um, good thing I bought it at the end of the day before I left because I am lactose intolerant. Uh, I shouldn't even be eating dairy or especially ice cream, right? And, uh, yeah, see, this is what I hate about doing my podcast at home because the walls are so thin so you can hear shit like that, right? (laughs) But anyway, yeah, you can, um, yeah, the ice cream was super good, but being lactose intolerant, man, it sucks. It does. It really sucks. 
um, but it was worth it, man. It was worth having that ice cream. It was worth, um, you know, seeing them prepare it. Good thing I caught them right before they served it to me because I couldn't do the whipped cream or the syrup. That kind of ruins the ice cream for me. Um, but overall, it was super good and very sweet. Um, to shout out to uh, my C, who was at the front, and we exchanged uh, business cards. And uh, I tagged them earlier in a post as well. So hopefully they kind of either share my um, podcast or, you know, kind of listen to it. If anyone just listens to the podcast, that'd be great. I don't even care so much about sharing. I just want you to listen to it. And if you do like it, then share it. I don't want to force you to just share my page and not like it or not like any of the content. Um, But yeah, shout out to them. And then uh, to all the people who won the prizes, like Young Chandler, Schneider, um, two other people won. I think today I handed out, I think I handed out about like four or five prizes. I know that uh, a child that uh, their parents answered for them or their family answered for him he he won the uh the maze runner blu-ray i had and then um most people took the funko pops hopefully uh tomorrow uh, or sunday the uh, 23rd hopefully they take the comic books <laughs> i know my comic books i have like to give out they don't really look interesting but hopefully i run into some like comic book collectors and they win that uh yaya han signed uh cosplay cover variant I really wish they knew like the value of that book because I've been trying I've been trying to sell it and no one's buying it so why not give one copy free right because I have two more at, uh, in my room just sitting there um, yeah you know it was uh, it was a great day you know it's, it's I guess you could say it's more like building character for me um, I'm definitely a little bit more comfortable now but it's still kind of hard because I don't want to just I don't I didn't want to approach people like waiting in line for their food and stuff like that because you know if it was me i wouldn't want that either um but at the same time it's just so awkward to just approach people if they're like by themselves or with a significant other which is why i was searching for people who were in like groups um i watched a little bit of sports today there was a wisconsin team playing football i didn't really get into it uh i know i, I think they won or they tied something like that I, I don't know i used to play flag football but i'm really out of shape and my, i don't want to risk any more injuries because my knees buckle now my shoulders hurt i get back pain super easily now so yeah it's not worth it <laughs> and um yeah it was uh it was a good day it just it was just so hot and you know at least there was like some sort of breeze you know and it wasn't cloudy and uh it didn't rain i just really wish i had more chances to hand out gifts um i didn't realize how hard it was and originally i wanted to do like a video where like people were answering and stuff but that just takes too much time and just too much work so just pictures and uploading it (laughs) and yeah so if um i uploaded the winners of the prizes on the pop-up page on facebook so for those of you who are listening and know someone who won or if you are the winner you can find your photo and tag yourself in it and then if you'd like you can share the pop-up page on facebook as well um i do want to clear up some things for uh for our new listeners and our previous our, our listeners now in case you don't fully understand the concept of this um, the reason why i keep referring back to pop luck podcast is because um again i match i again i mentioned this in my uh first episode um, i'm just gonna make it more clear uh when we start when we started pop luck podcast it was me andrew lee and our buddy mark halberg it was the three of us and we you know we all pitched in money for mics and uh and just putting our time in you know we all did our own thing uh mark uh, got someone to do the art um i pitched in money to buy the ads and uh, i did pay for the soundcloud for a while and then andrew took over that um we all pitched in for the cards for our pop luck podcast cards i still have some left at home too and i'm pretty sure the other guys do have some of their cards left too um, yeah, it was just something we all did equally, you know, it just, it's something that we couldn't just get rid of, even though we kind of, uh, temporarily disbanded. Um, when we do get together, it's always just going to be pop luck when it's the three of us. Um, me doing spoiler force podcast doesn't affect that at all. Uh, with spoiler force podcast, I really do want people to, um, just follow pop luck as well. Cause, um, the three of us, we can all use that page. And Andrew's the manager of that page too, so he can still post whenever he wants. But he's, uh, I don't think he's as active as I am on it. I'm always like, you know, sharing, trying to share up to date news and stuff like that, or at least something that, at least stuff that I like. 
Uh, I'm not trying to cover everything. And uh, I do post the things that I like and what I watch and, you know, what I'm reading and stuff. But, yeah, it, it's something we all did equally. And, uh, you know, I, I had to ask because I didn't want to step over their, you know, step over their feet and just say, like, oh, yeah, I'm taking over the page or anything like that. Um, so I, I messaged them. I was like, hey, you, hey, guys, is it cool if I kind of still use this pop-up page? And just, you know, promote my own podcast. And they were cool with it. You know, it was no big deal. Mark's doing his cosplay. I wish he'd used a public, podca- a public podcast page to uh, promote his cosplay. Um, he has quite a following on on Instagram. He's building up slowly. But, hey, man, if you look on his Instagram, man, he's doing a great job. He's making friends. He's doing photo shoots. And I believe he told us that there was a clothing, like an internet clothing line who wanted to use him as a like a shirt model all the best for him man. and andrew he's doing his thing with Sli- uh, clean slate productions shout out to chin and dow um you know andrew's doing his thing with them and we all just share and support each other's stuff man it's a good thing man so uh yeah so when i do mention pop luck podcast i mean the three of us you know it's all of our work it's all of our effort so um just follow that that way you can keep up to date with whatever they're doing too if they do post stuff um yeah but yeah i i am mostly active on that facebook page because i do have an addiction to facebook and social media but i do want to what i'm doing with with spoiler first podcast is just another way for me to let out my creativity and to share what i think on things which is why i mostly review the things i like like comic books anime manga or movies um now i will say i'm not a big anime or manga like otaku I'm not going to claim that I am because uh, I was, I wouldn't say put on check, but when people ask me, like, do I watch like uh, that cooking anime or like stuff like that? I'm not too deep into that. I mean, I know I heard those other shows are good, like uh, like Shield Hero and uh, the that cooking one and that basketball one. I know those shows are good. I just don't have time to watch those because I'm more wrapped up into reading, really. Um the animes have to really, really catch my eye. Like, I think I'm more drawn to action, uh, action-styled anime, like My Hero and Demon Slayer, um, especially more, like, serious ones, like Attack on Titan and Goblin Slayer. Those are the ones that I'm more drawn to, so I'm always going to talk about those. Um, but for comic books, uh, this is a great way for me to still read my comic books, you know? And uh, that way I'm not behind, or that way I'm not, like, just letting it sit there i mean i do have a lot to read for sure but i am making time to read at least what's somewhat important um and speaking of that as well um i have read the latest deceased number two um if you're not familiar with deceased it's a uh apocalypse version of the dc universe kind of like a zombie thing but with deceased number two they verify or batman at least um he verifies that it's not a zombie apocalypse but it's like a death apocalypse. The, the people who get corrupted, um, they just make death of everything. And sadly, Batman was infected. And then he was wearing the Mr. Freeze suit. And um, Alfred had to shoot him at the end. Uh, hopefully, he didn't die, but I'm pretty sure he did. And it, that series, that second issue itself, it was crazy. Because in the beginning, Aquaman uh, checks on a, like a yacht or a big boat, like a, like a ship. And... He got jumped by all the zombies or the infected. Um, Joker gets... Uh, he Like, the only way you can get infected is if you look on a computer screen or, like, a electronical screen or getting bit. And uh, Joker was looking at his computers and Harley walks in trying to, again, break up with him. And then they cut it off at that. Green Lantern, he gets turned. I think he looked at his phone. Um, and then Canary and Green Arrow had to kill him, had to kill him. And then Canary, Black Canary becomes the next Green Lantern, which was like really unexpected. Um, she looks really great as a Green Lantern. So I don't know why they won't run with that. And for those who are reading Deceased, uh, DC did confirm that there's like tie-ins or like, uh, I guess you could say like side issues of the Deceased series. Um, there is one coming, I think in September. Uh, I'm not going to verify the date exactly, but it's around that time. Um, so yeah, they involved more other characters like Blue Beetle. I think one of the covers had Deathstroke on it. So definitely, uh, look into that. And, um, I, I kind of read the latest Doomsday. I still have to make time to read it because I know that this latest issue, um, this latest issue here, it was more, 
Uh, definitely more dialogue from Mr. from Dr. Manhattan, not Mr. Dr. Manhattan. And uh, yeah, he, I know the gist of it. Like he is the cause of like the time shift or like the shift in reality because he moved the, the, Green, the first Green Lantern ring that went to Alan Scott and that just rippled effect everything. And then he caused the universe, that uh, the main universe, the meta universe. And uh, again, he's still trying to figure out why he doesn't see the ending for anything besides him fighting Superman. Um, but I definitely have to get back into reading that. So that's all I'm going to really touch up on. Um, and Heroes in Crisis, the finale. Um, before I get into that too, they are, there are spinoffs of that series. Like um, there's a Harley Quinn slash Poison Ivy spinoff. It's like a mini mini series i believe and it's the same thing with um it's the same thing with the wally west um i forgot the main title of what it's called but it's still about wally west i believe that's a six issue series too um with the finale of heroes in crisis i liked it but at the same time i was like not satisfied i just hate the fact that they ruined wally west like why bring him back and make him go through all this traumatic event and not kind of like fully rec- recover or like find a new find a new motive in life it's like he just goes back in time like Barry and I'm I time travel itself the concept of it it's, it's very complex and it's cool too like inception but it gets boring when everyone or everything does it uses it and they it's just getting like it just gets replayed over and over again um so yeah I wasn't I don't know. I wasn't like fully satisfied, but it was eh. I mean, I, I understand what Tom King was shooting for. He well, he wanted that M Night Shyamalan kind of plot twist, and uh, yeah, and he he didn't really deliver. But I still like him as a writer. Um, now I also read the uh, Batman the Last Night on Earth. That's part of the DC Black Label. And for those of you who don't know, DC has gotten rid of the. Uh, Vertigo brand of comic books, which is like the Watchmen and all that stuff. Um, they're going to place everything that's like mature content under the black label. And then they have like a kid's label and then the regular DC label. That's something that they're doing. And that was confirmed by the Previews World um, website. And you can find that on their Facebook page too. On The Last Night on Earth, I'm not going to go into detail with this as well. I'm just, again, I'm just summarizing what I've read and what's happening um i don't tend to break down these series like by by the page or by the panels there's other people who do that who do that like comic story and and um other people as well with batman the last night on earth it's about um like batman gets apparently he gets killed in the beginning of the book now if you don't know the batman uh continuity he has built he built a machine that can transfer his subconsciousness into like another body which is in the detective comics um issue that's back in the like the f- new 52 i believe it's like number 227 i want to believe um give me one moment to confirm that i have that book laying around somewhere okay i'm back um it is the batman detective comics number 27 the new 52 it's a uh, special mega sized anniversary issue i believe it's by scott snyder to just wrap it up it's batman he has a machine that can transfer his subconsciousness to other bodies and apparently clones of himself um with that book it kind of like uh continues off into the batman the last night on earth it uses that kind of uh that part of the storyline i guess you can say and alfred creates this um fake world of to bruce wayne to kind of like make it seem like he doesn't know where he's at and that he's actually pretty crazy um there has been concepts that batman is just someone who's mad and running around a psych ward and alfred is just feeding into his batman needs um because they do like what alfred does is he puts him in a fake arkham asylum and creates like all these characters that resemble his rogue gallery like the joker and harley quinn and penguin and hush and they make it seem like Batman's crazy, but really Alfred is just protecting him from the uh, the end of the world, I guess. You know, because all these comic books go to the end of the end of the world, and um, yeah, and uh, the toy 
the toy maker i can't i think that's the villain's name the toy maker he um he helped alfred create this world and um at the end batman leaves and tries to figure out what happened and uh, he finds the joker's head in a lamp and <laughs> it's just so random because he's walking in the desert and he just finds him like that and then they uh, they go into you know they keep traveling and then they run into these monsters that are connected to the green lantern rings and then they find uh wonder woman who is a who's like a survivor with other groups and she has like this crazy mohawk and then like their their plan is to go to the gates of hades because that's the only place that's accepting them for survival and then um yeah it's pretty uh twisted uh i got i honestly i had to go back and reread it uh it's been like a few weeks since i read it i read it like once or maybe twice um with so much things going on um that's just like what i want to share and um what the reason why i'm like sharing what i'm reading is because i want those of you who are listening to definitely go out on your own and buy comic books um you know it's a great way to know these characters and it's honestly the real source material to these to these heroes and to these movies because the movies that portray these heroes as great as it looks it'll never beat these comic books um the mcu has done a great job by creating their own world and using bits and pieces of the marvel comics but at the end the source is always better the main source material is always better than the movies or animated films um, the comic books are always better and the same thing with anime the manga is always better unless it's like a close one like attack on titan uh, and i'll get that i'll get to that in a bit i did want to talk about briefly the uh, final fantasy 7 remake here um for those of you who are final fantasy 7 fans e3 released the trailers that square enix had um apparently there was the gameplay trailer they revealed tifa sephiroth Woo-hoo. yeah <laughs> and uh it looks amazing and i believe they also released the first boss gameplay and man for just the first boss it was quite the battle because that's one of the easiest fights you have from the ps1 version um but yeah it's it has like this final fantasy 12 13 15 f- battlefield to it you can switch your main characters you know, I, I hopefully they have like that kind of gambit system, like in Final Fantasy XII, where when you do switch your main, that your other characters have like a selective, um, selective use of like the commands you you input for them. Um, hopefully that's kind of like that. But then, man, the the animation, the graphics, incredibly beautiful, and um, man, Tifa, I was glad to see Tifa. You know, like. The way how they made her look was definitely, um, definitely not for the sex appeal. <laughs> uh, I mean, for for those who grew up with Final Fantasy, knew that the way how they first created Tifa, she was, you know, for the sex appeal. Like she had very, she was very curvy, and um, her clothing was, um, you know, very uh i guess you could say very not revealing but then it was very like you know they showed her they showed her midriff and it was short um but with this it, they made it look more appropriate for her character and seeing Aerith uh, again as well was crazy because i feel like they've never done her character justice until crisis core um there was never no there wasn't really a good voice voice actress for her until crisis core um, but it's going to be sad to see her get killed by Sephiroth in that kind of uh, animation. Because it was already sad watching the PS1 version where Sephiroth comes out of the, you know, comes comes out from the top of the of the cave and just stabs the shit out of her. And especially with his, with his sword, you know. <laughs> and man, that was just PS1 graphics. The QB 3D look, you know, that, that block look. But with with this man that's going to be pretty graphic um hopefully it's not too graphic but it's going to be sad and it's going to feel even more real than the first time um yeah the gameplay looks amazing and uh you know it's glad to see that you know that this game has evolved so much and from what i've read on facebook um, they're adding more to the story so uh, my prediction is that they probably they probably go through the advent children part of the story 
and maybe touch up on like the Turk story and before Crisis. Definitely touch up on Crisis Core. I know you you can't go through that game without going through the moments of Crisis Core. Zack's moment of Final Fantasy is what made Final Fantasy VII. Zack is the real hero of Final Fantasy VII. I'm just gonna say it. He's the character is way better than Cloud. Um, and Crisis Core till this day is still, I think, one of the best Final Fantasy games ever made. Um, just based on story, you know, that's that storyline itself was just so good. Um, yeah, and that's what I wanted to just talk about with the remake of Final Fantasy VII there. I'm super excited. I'm Again, if you listen to my other podcast episodes, as much as I like these games, I'm not a gamer. I just like watching it. I like watching the storyline. I like watching other people play it. I, I don't have... I mean, I do play games, and once I'm playing a game, I won't stop, but I'm not a super gamer. I won't go out and buy the next gaming system. Um... If there ever came a, like, if I had an opportunity to play it, then I would, but usually I don't. Um, now let's move on to uh, some of the manga and anime here. Again, I'm only touching up on stuff that I watch and I read. Um, so, uh, My Hero Academia, I'm still, I don't think I read this week's issue, but I was halfway through last week's issue where they pick up from where uh, twice he was able to lead the league of uh the league of villains into the building where they face the corporate head guy i forgot his name already um his quirk was pretty crazy because he can expand his limbs kind of like how uh all for one did against all might um and i stopped it at there because i was working (laughs) so i definitely had to go back and read it um but yeah i mean with the storyline here with the league of villains um twice has been um really impressive with how they did his powers because like he's now he's not afraid to use to use his um cloning abilities and he knows who he is so he just keeps splitting himself up into all the clones and making making them fight for him it's like it's like an unlimited shadow clone jutsu um i really wish they did touch up more on toga though i know she's beat up in this part of the story but if you read the previous issues um she can now use the blood that she like uh con- like the, the blood that she uses to ingest she can use that and copy people's quirks along with the, how they look because she copied uh Uraraka's ability the gravity ability which is insane because if you remember back at the uh the licensing exam for heroes she took a sample of Midoriya um, I know that they, and if you read the manga, this is all spoilers to the manga. So if you get to this My Hero part, I'm sorry, fast forward it. <laughs> but uh, you realize in the Class A versus Class B arc of My Hero that um, the characters' names are not memorable. The the one who can copy his copy people's quirks by touching them, he touched Midoriya and it didn't work. And he called Midoriya's quirk dull. Um... But I believe it didn't work because Midoriya had multiple quirks. And so he couldn't use it because it's all under one quirk. Even though Midoriya has multiple quirks. And I think it's the same thing with Toga's ability. That she can use multiple quirks at the same time. So maybe that's why she's not able to use Midoriya's yet. And if she does. And if she is able to use the one for all quirk. Then that's a huge twist to the story too. Um, they touch up on Dobby a little bit too. You realize that the more Dobby uses his flames, he gets burned, which is kind of like a double-edged sword, um, which sucks because he actually has pretty powerful. He he has like a powerful flame ability. Um, now in the anime, it's blue, and everyone knows that, or you should know that blue flame is hotter than red flame. Um, now with Dobby he has blue flames and he's using that so maybe that's a like a you know like a double edged sword to him um I I think this theory I think that he is a bastard of um Todoroki's dad they're probably half brothers and it's gonna be like a Zuko versus um his sister kind of storyline now with One Punch Man uh I read up to where Saitama fights Orochi um (laughs) <laughs> that fight was pretty funny too because 
they just go straight to it. it it's not so much like when Saitama fought um, uh, Lord Boros. Uh, it's pretty straight to the point. Saitama was like, you know, I heard the, your speeches before, the greatest force, the strongest being ever, the someone that's different. Let's just fight because uh, Saitama says that his apartment is upstairs from their lair and it's disturbing him. And so they fight. Saitama just destroys him with a few punches and it's done. Um, now they do touch up on uh, Tatsumaki. She fights Giro Giro, which is that, uh, that Cyclops, like, jelly looking alien thing where he's like in charge of everyone and he can control people um her abilities just destroys him and he gets wiped out by tatsumaki and just show it just shows you how powerful she is and she's just the number two hero um they still haven't shown blast yet i know they revealed him in the web comics but i'm not gonna go that far and read um what's like what's ahead of the actual manga but yeah, that's what I've read so far about One Punch Man. So if you want to read that, definitely look into that. Um, he just obliterates Orochi. The storyline's still good. The, they're still fighting the villains. And uh, King's storyline in that part was pretty funny. They ended The, the last few pages I read, um, the alien, like one of the monsters that he, that he faced, uh, took the form of the boy that they're trying to save but because King was so frightened already he looked scary so the alien got scared and he ran away <laughs> that was pretty funny uh, One Punch Man always finds a way to to throw in humor and serious moments which is why I love this series so much and uh, the anime itself was great too because they're showing uh, more fight scenes now and people don't like the animation I, I think it's great like when this last episode, Garu fights the A class heroes. It definitely, I mean, the manga, it's like shot for shot of the manga, and it's really cool to see that they they make Garu fight the way he does in the anime. And um, I hate that they cut it off mid fight because that fight right there is really good too. And you see him use Watchman Dog's style of being on all fours versus using his uh, martial art that uh, Silver Fang taught him. Um, but that's going to be a great fight too. And then you get to see more villains. And I'm, I'm excited to see what's after that fight because, um, again, it's, it's going to be a great Saitama moment, like always. Um, now, I do want to touch up on, uh, on Demon Slayer. Um, I've been talking about this for the past few um, podcasts. Demon Slayer is a must-watch anime. I just got done watching the latest episode, and Z- Zenetsu, the chicken boy, man, his scene was fucking awesome. If you haven't watched it yet, spoilers right here. This is why it's called Spoiler Force, because I am going to talk about everything. Um, his scene stole that whole episode for me, man, because like he's so annoying. He's kind of like Bruce Banner, you know? He's super scared, super skittish, so... Um, so insecure and then like he so he gets so scared when he fights the the demon that he passes out and then like it's like the hulk took over him and he wakes up and he does his technique the thunderclap and flash dance or something like that and he just bam takes off like the flash and just cuts off his head and you see the lightning and the animation that was so amazing and uh man i wish they showed more of him fighting because if that's how he's gonna fight in the rest of the anime i'm excited for that but it's so stupid because he woke up and he didn't even realize what he did. He thought that the other boy, or at least the the, young, the, the little boy that he's with, saved him. <laughs> so they they kind of just that kind of just ruins the moment for him. But what I do love though is that um, I do love that uh, Tanjiro is just so clever when he's fighting. Um, his fight scene with the uh, the demon that has the dr- the drums. Uh, man, he picked up everything so quick and. In a way, he's so much like Midoriya, even though they have it's the same voice actors. Him and Mid- Tanjiro and Midoriya are just so similar to where it's practically almost the same character. Now, I will say, um, I'm going to catch some flack for this too. And I think already that Tanjiro is a better character than Midoriya. Fight me. Midoriya has the amazing powers and will you know, to be a hero. And he's such a super fan to all might that it's relatable to us nerds 
But I like the characters like Tanjiro who um, who kind of just realizes what's going on and who's so observant. I mean, they're both so similar because Midoriya does the, Midoriya does the same thing too. But the way how they display um, the fight intelligence of Tanjiro, man, I I think that's so amazing because like his buildup was super quick. But at the same time, you you see how much he's improved within what the, the these. 12 to 13 episodes I know there's like a time skip but still it's just like he's not dumb like like, he doesn't have dumb moments like Midoriya during the battles he's always adapting which is what I love the most and like to see his sword play and to see him like just overcome and just figure out the puzzles and to adapt to every enemy he fights is insane and then like you know in this episode you, you see a little bit of insecurity in him because he's hurt he's not healed from the last fight from the previous episodes which you should watch because that uh, when he fights the uh, the demon with the tamari and with the arrow with the arrow hands with the eyes in his palms man i love that episode man because they went and when tanjiro combined his abilities to make a new one or an impro impro imp- how can i when Tanjiro makes an improvisate, I can't, I, <laughs> I can't even say he improvises. Put it that way, <laughs> he improvises his abilities and makes a new move, and then he killed that demon with the with the arrows. Yeah, man, that was just so creative, and that's what I love seeing protagonists do, man, just to adapt to their fights and to just always like outsmart them instead of just being like Goku and just overpowering everyone mid fight you know um i love that it makes it more real to me uh which is why i I, i'm loving this series so far and uh you know i saw some spoilers already um i'm not mad because i fell for it but then at the same time i'm tempted to read the manga after this series is done um and i plan to do that for the promised neverland which i've been saying for quite some time i have not moved on from chapter 18 yet i'm just struggling to read I have so many things to read already too and I want to read Samurai 8 but that first issue is freaking 78 pages man it's just so much for just one chapter I love the artwork already because the main character looks like a mix of uh, Naruto and Sasuke when they're in like their powered up forms Um, I mean it looks interesting but I just 78 pages is just killing me because I could barely read 48 pages of Attack on Titan and speaking of Attack on Titan, their latest manga is crazy. It is so crazy right now. I think Eren has another plan up his sleeve. It looks, the way how they're portraying Eren in the manga right now, it looks like he's teaming up with Zeke. And if you don't know now, in the anime, they just revealed who Zeke is. Zeke and Eren are half brothers. And up to this point now in the manga, they know about each other and they're working together. Zeke has a plan to just eliminate everyone that has like the Titan gene or that are Eldian. Aaron's plan is to just flatten the earth and just start over again. But I don't know, man, because like in this latest issue, Zeke saves Aaron from almost getting killed by uh, Marley and from the uh, from the Cart Titan and from the Jaw Titan. And Aaron's walking towards Zeke. And from what they revealed in the manga is that Aaron, uh, if he touches someone of royal blood, he can use that power of the founding titan, which he has in him too. Because remember, in, in the manga right now, Aaron has multiple powers. He has his own power, which is the attack titan. He has the war the uh, Warhammer titan, which is which is the one he killed back in uh, the few previous few issues and when they fought in marley aaron can create weapons like how he hardens his skin um which is part of the warhammer ability and then he has the founding titan ability which is to control all the titans but because he's not a royal blood he can't use it unless he makes contact of someone with royal blood which is zeke and zeke and aaron are probably using each other to to get to that ability which is what i'm waiting for in this next chapter because um, from what I've read online, I don't, I can't find the exact source, but I do know for sure. Attack on Titan is getting close to its end. It's gonna wrap up pretty soon. Hopefully, hopefully they don't pull some Game of Thrones shit and ruin it. But I know for sure that they're going to end this well. I just don't know how. Uh, the writer himself has written the ending to Attack on Titan. It's just about how he's gonna get to it. 
Uh, I know there, from what he said himself, that there's two or three arcs left of what the, of the manga, and then that's it. I don't think they should carry on anymore with Attack on Titan. Once they get done with the story, that's it. It had an amazing run, and some 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 stories are meant to be not as long as like Naruto and Dragon Ball Z. Attack on Titan for me was one of the best things I've ever watched and read ever. It's forever one of my favorite animes, definitely top five. Um, if you haven't read the manga do it because I would rather read the manga first and then watch the anime um, because that way you can get in touch with the characters more because when I read the manga and then went and watched the anime again you get to see more perspectives and more I guess more revealing plots in the first few seasons and even in the earlier episodes and even in the episodes now, like I sympathize with Reiner because I've read what because of what I read in the manga, and um, yeah, I'm excited for what's next for Attack on Titan. Um, now, Goblin Slayer, uh, they have a movie coming out called Goblin's Crown. Apparently, it's an OVA in 2020. I believe it's going to be released sometime in February. Don't quote me on that. Um, but it's a movie promoting the next season. But man, I loved the like the goriness of <laughs> the goriness of, of goblin slayer it's it's like D, but then like when you see these characters get hurt they get hurt like when uh when their healer when she gets bitten by the the giant goblin man that part was crazy i thought she was gonna get killed and then goblin slayer went super saiyan and like rolled the d20 and got critical and killed everyone <laughs> But man, Goblin Slayer is such an intense anime itself, and um, I know that they switched arcs in like comparison to the manga. Um, but hopefully, with this with this movie, and hopefully it releases in the states because I definitely want to buy tickets for this. Um, but hopefully, the story here is going to be amazing. I have the poster as my wallpaper on my phone. Um, it looks like it takes place in like in a snowy mountain area. What the fuck. Sorry about that. That's my stupid dog. This is why I don't like podcasting in my house because the dogs are everywhere and the walls are thin and you can hear everything and pretty much my microphones pick up everything. So um, editing this is going to be quite a pain in the ass. Um, yeah, to get back to Goblin Slayer, it's t- it takes place in like, like a snowy mountain area. So hopefully that's going to like make uh, the characters improvise even more and strategize more. <laughs> um yeah i have two dogs at home and you know they're very like attached to everyone and pretty soon when, when whoever gets home now if someone does get home they're gonna go wild and their my microphone's gonna pick up on that sorry to those who are listening you're gonna get a taste of what it sounds like in my house to continue on from like from anime here i'm gonna go into what i uh watched recently in like movie wise um now i did mention uh, about Godzilla in my last episode with uh, with Chin, um, we talked about that as well. Um, my my rating for Godzilla, I gave it like a three and a half out of five. I like the story a lot. Um, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna touch up too much on what I didn't like. Well, you can listen to uh, you can listen to what we talked about in that episode, uh, which is episode seven. But I do want to talk about Dark Phoenix though. I watched that as well um, a few weeks ago. I was hoping to talk about that with um, with my guest last week, but um, I didn't get to. But that movie was just super underwhelming. I already knew it was going to be super underwhelming. But Sophie Turner was amazing. Or she looked amazing. But um, my buddy Andrew was like, he, he she looks like uh, that one singer. Like Billy something? I don't know. I forgot his name. But yeah, she looks like that that male singer who likes to be very flamboyant and uh, <laughs> I honestly I didn't want to admit that I saw that but then like now that I see it more and more it's like boy George that's the name she looks like boy George <laughs> and uh, honestly I, I wanted to I didn't want to admit that I saw it like that and then like I just keep seeing the pictures side by side and then I'm just like shit <laughs> and like she looks just like boy George now Fuck you, Andrew. <laughs> oh, man. I hated that. Oh, man. That just ruined it for me. But, uh, yeah. That's just so underwhelming. I, 
Magneto was the best part of that movie. And Mystique, I can't, honestly, I can't stand Jennifer Lawrence as an overall actress. And, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I liked how they killed her off in the movie, but then, like, it was just stupid at the same time. Because I really wish Dark Phoenix went out with a bang, you know, like, risk it all. Fox, well, this is the last, like, X-Men movie that Fox has. Go out with a bang. Kill off everyone. Attack on Titan everyone. You know, like, Game of Thrones everyone. Have have Sansa or have Jean Grey rip rip uh, Cyclops eyes out from his face, like do something crazy. But man, nope, nope. They had to just give it a semi decent ending. Now, um, yeah, that movie was like a three out of five for me. Um, I gotta say the the fight scenes were the best part. Like the fight scene in New York where um, when Beast has sided with Magneto and his group, and they fight like. You know, Nightcrawler, Cyclops, and Professor X. That was a good fight scene. And the train sequence is really cool too. But I hate the antagonist. Aliens, really? And Jessica Chastain, she's just some regular random woman in the movie that becomes an alien? No, that's stupid. They should have just led, they should have just fought Phoenix at the end. like, And had her like wipe out everyone. And then because of that effect, because she destroys everything, her power opens like a wormhole or like... It rips through the space-time continuum and then bam convergence of the MCU that's what I think should have happened Uh, but yeah that's what I think about that movie so far or at least that's what I I thought about that movie I know I I know it didn't do too well in theaters I think I know it made like 25 million Um, and I think I mean it sounds a lot but then movie wise that's not really a lot Um, Avengers is re-releasing again too Um, now I think that's next weekend the 28th um, is re-releasing. It's the exact same thing, but at the end, there's a post-credit scene. Why? What is my mic picking up, man? Like, I see this. Ah, see, it, it's the fireworks outside. That's what's picking up, and that's why my dog is in my room. She can hear fireworks. Um, my dog Nini, she hates fireworks because if she hears it and she can't see it, it freaks her out. Which is why you hear all this ruffling in my podcast because she's see that she's going in and out of my room. She can't sit still. She's freaking out. She's having an anxiety attack. And now you're going to hear fireworks. See that? You hear that? Unfortunately, I can't edit that out. You're going to hear my dog's bark. (laughs) So uh, I'm going to pause this really quick and take a quick break and come back. All right, I'm back. And I do apologize about that. Um, Until I get my own like studio or recording room, doing my episodes by myself is going to sound like that. You're going to, again, you're going to hear everything that's in my house because my walls are thin. My neighborhood's a bunch of ruckus. <laughs> my dogs are wild. Um, yeah, the Dark Phoenix. So that's that's what I think about it overall. I mean, it wasn't too great. Um, it is what it is. And I am excited, though, that to see that um, the MCU has the rights for Fantastic Four and the X-Men. So I'm looking forward to that. And I, I know they're not going to do anything new until like a few years. I think that's a great move. Just so that it can settle down before they send out the X-Men again. Um, Now, uh, this is something that's a tangent here. Um, For those of you who don't know, I'm a huge MMA fan. And, uh, I mean, I'm not going to, like, always talk about MMA. But it always has been a part of my life. And uh, recently, Chael Sonnen has retired. And uh, I did just want to touch up on this, too, for those of you who are listening and that are MMA fans. Um... You can, you you can hate me on this too. I think Chael Sonnen was definitely a one of a kind fighter. Was he the greatest? No, but he fought. He fought some of the great. Uh, he fought some of the greatest, and you know he's as a fighter himself. Even though he cheated, he was openly honest with it. He admitted that he cheated. Um, I still get it. Still kind of cringes a little bit when he talks about him, about him fighting Anderson and that he beat Anderson. I mean, he beat Anderson in four rounds, but he lost the fight. It's nothing to brag about. But still, he was the first person to ever manhandle Anderson Silva like that. So props to him. As a person outside of the cage, he's really, uh, you know, a nice dude. He He's outgoing. He talks what's on his mind. He's not afraid of anyone. Um, you know, he's. I think he'd make a really great commentator or judge in MMA in the future. He recently retired because he lost to Machida. And man, Leoto is Machida's always going to be my favorite fighter in the world the way how he this dude fights his movements the use of traditional shotokan karate and sumo 
to defend wrestlers off the floor. Like Machida was made to stop wrestlers. And if you watch that fight with him and Chael, he just timed it right. I mean, Chael's not much of a striker anyway, but you would you know the game plan with Chael. He's a wrestler. He's going to try to corner Machida to the cage and take him down. But Machida's style just made to stop wrestlers, man. And like he, the timing of his, uh, I believe it was his left knee and the left body kick timed it perfectly. Um, for me, after watching Machida so much all these years, I, I think the best way to beat Machida, who has like a really good counter counter uh, counter fighting style, the best way to beat him is to be an aggressive striker. You can't really out wrestle him unless you're physically stronger than him, like Weidman or John Jones or Luke Rockhold. Um, unless you have those kind of traits, and if you match up with him kind of evenly, like him and Chael did. The only way to the only way to really beat him is to be a better striker or a more aggressive striker than him. Other than that, Machida's style is still one. Of, I think one of the best styles in the world. Um, it's just he's older now. I wish he still had kind of a chin again, like when he was younger. But um, as a, as a super fan of Leota Machida, I wish he kind of just retired already. He's made his legacy as the karate fighter, the karate kid, the Ryu of MMA to put it that way the dude's done it all or not exactly done it all but to me he, I think he's done done it all and he's proven his point as a fighter I, I don't think he has anything left to prove if he retired now it'd be great for his career to end it on where he's at but yeah uh, props to, to Chael Son and to you know to admit that he lost he's always been a good sport about whether he wins or loses I mean, he stirred, he stirred up beef with Anderson Silva because it's, he knew it was away from the draw money and to draw the fight. Um, but I still remember when Chael Sonnen announced that he wanted to fight Anderson Super Bowl weekend. And if he lost, he'd leave the UFC forever. And that never went through until like years later. Uh, but yeah, that's what I just wanted to touch up on that MMA news there really quickly and just give Chael Sonnen his props as well. He has his own podcast, You're Welcome by Chael Sonnen. Um, his last, not his last episode, but I think it was last or like a week or two ago, he has he had an episode on his podcast where he spoke of T J Dillashaw, and you know when hearing that episode with T J speaking about ultimately cheating too because T J Dillashaw got stripped of his belt and he suspended for two years because he uh, he was doping with EPO. Um, I don't know too much about e- I don't know too much about EPO, but with EPO is just about like injecting more red blood cells into your body so that you can work harder. Um, so technically, it's still cheating. But uh, yeah, Chael talked to him about that, and they. I'm surprised that TJ even talked about it because he knew that Chael was gonna talk about it, but then he wasn't gonna bring it up unless TJ talked about it. So it was you know it was like a give and take kind of thing. But I'm glad that they spoke about it. And as a fighter, you got to own up to your mistakes, too. I mean, if you openly cheated, you cheated. And there's nothing to go around about that. You got caught. Uh, but much props to those guys for for even talking about it. Because fighters in the UFC, no one is clean. Like Nick Diaz said, everybody's on steroids. Everyone cheats. Um, very few fighters are clean. Um, yeah, to get back to this, to what I really want to talk about in my main topics here. Um, back to just kind of just drawing back here to comic books here. Um, I did mention about the DC Black Label, and uh, under that label, there's a new book called Harleen, or like a Har- it's a Harley Quinn, bo- it's a Harley Quinn book by the uh, writer and artist uh, Stefan Sajic. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I know his name's like Irish, and I the vowels and the enunciations of Irish lettering and spelling is super different from how the Americans in the West here do it. Um, but yeah, he's going to take over this Harleen or Harley Quinn or Harley Quinn or origin here, and uh, his artwork is super amazing. I spoke about his artwork in my last episode too. He did like Aquaman and Suicide Squad. He's a very unique style. It's like they have like long. It's like anime-ish kind of, but they have longer faces and like uh, high cheekbones. So it, you can tell his art because they all kind of look the same anyway. Um, but it's an origin of Harley Quinn, and I'm super excited for it. It's most likely going to be like a three issue book, um, but like the books itself for the DC Black Label, they are very thick, and they're roughly about like six dollars, which is worth it because it's super detailed, and they get you get more out of what you pay for. Like there's more pages in it. 
Um, I believe there's usually about like 48 pages to a DC Black Label book. Um, yeah, and uh, I did want to talk about um, Black Mirror Season 5 too. Sadly, it's only three episodes, which sucks. And they're not exactly like how Black Mirror episodes used to be. But at the same time, it's still the uh, the main topic of Black Mirror is how technology is either good or bad for us and how it affects us. Now, that first episode, Striking Vipers, <laughs> if you have not watched that yet, you should watch it because, man, that episode caught me so good. Um, Anthony Mackie, Papa Doc, the Falcon, he's the main character in there with um, with Black the Black Manta actor. I forgot his name. I, I, he has like a very unique name, too. But that plot twist in that <laughs> that plot twist in that episode they it, it talks about uh vr and uh, striking vipers is like a uh, street fighter the street fighter of that uh, episode and they use the vr and actually become the game itself and they and their their uh, consciousness goes into the, the game and they could physically feel and move as the character and in that game you can you know in fighting games you can select any character such as an animal or a opposite sex character and yeah man that plot twist caught me up caught me off guard because like it was just two best friends who knew each other for a long time and they played games all the time and now they they got to be in the game and when they started to <laughs> do the making out and the adult scenes <laughs> it's just so funny because you see you, the, the girl who the, the actress who plays the the female fighter is mantis from or palm Clemence, uh, she's Mantis from Guardians, and then the guy who plays like the Ryu character, he's from though he's the Black Ranger, the Asian guy from, from the Power Rangers movie, the Black Ranger, he was in it, and you know, I mean, you see that you see them going at it, right? But then you know that in that episode, the characters are the two best friends, <laughs> so that was so great, and I was cracking up so hard when I was watching that uh, the scene unfold, and then uh, last weekend. Or not last weekend, but last Monday, I went to Andrew's house too, and he never saw it. And then we watched it, or at least I watched it again with Andrew. And his reaction was just super priceless. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, the second episode wasn't all that great. Uh, Topher Grace, Eric Foreman was in it. Um, that episode wasn't good. It, I, it wasn't too appealing. It was just about how social media affects us and, and how it could affect us, that kind of thing. But the third episode, it was Miley Cyrus, which was surprising because I didn't think she'd take, um, or I didn't think she'd be acting again, or at least I, I, I didn't think she'd be acting, but I mean, it was pretty good. It just kind of shows the, the darker side of the music industry and how corrupt it is. Um, I'm glad that she took that kind of role because she was a witness and she was a part of that world of music and she was a part of the corrupt part of the music industry. Um... Yeah, I mean, she got this. I'm pretty sure what she portrayed in that episode was actually what happens in real life. Um, and speaking of music, too, be, I, the, my coworker, the one that I'm going to be interviewing for my next episode, he was a part of that. Like he he didn't like take part of corrupting the musicians, but he was affected by the management and stuff like that. And he'll definitely get into that, and we will talk about that in that episode next week or next weekend um so look out for that stay in tune for that um he's he'll be my third guest he's my uh co-worker he's a local battle rapper who uh you know again the industry screwed him over and you know he's trying to get back into it but but i'll talk more about that with him so just stay tuned and follow pop luck podcast so that you'll get updates about that um just a few more things here before i uh sign off um, I do have some predictions for the San Diego Comic Con as well. Um, I listened to Kevin Smith's podcast recently, and he's um, he's going to be a guest there. And he talked about what he thought, and I agree with him too. I do think that you know Marvel does have a better chance for this uh, San Diego Comic Con this year because DC is not a part of it. Um, I do think that they will be revealing more like movies that they have planned out for. Uh, uh, for phase four and phase five, they prop they probably will reveal that. Um, I know that uh, there was supposed to be a reveal of uh, damn. I'm, 
And I know there's more reveals for like comic books and stuff at San Diego Comic Con, but Marvel's the big one at H, uh, Hall H for sure. Um, so that's what I think is going to happen at San Diego this year. Not too much. I know that it's just going to be more Marvel things released. And maybe DC, DC says that they won't release anything, but you never know. Maybe they might slip up and reveal something. So, they, yeah, and speaking of like other podcasts, like uh, Kevin Smith's podcast and Chael, Chael Sonnen's podcast, um, I do listen to uh, Mike Tyson's Hot Boxing podcast, and you should definitely check that out too. Um, Mike Tyson has great guests on his show. I mean, like some of them I don't really like, but overall he has great guests. Um, his guest of like his uh, episode with Wiz Khalifa, Snoop Dogg, um, Logic, um, LL Cool J is coming up soon. He's gonna be a, a guest on the show. He's gonna he he had a uh, um, some other major artists too, um, and some people that I've recently followed on Instagram too. He's man, he's got a great lineup for that show, and it, it's it's amazing to see that someone like Mike Tyson has changed so much. From the aggressive fighter who knocked out everyone, and now he's admitting that he was openly scared all the time. And um, just today, I was listening to the episode with him and Logic. Mike Tyson likes romantic movies, which is weird because I would never thought, I would never think, I would never think that Mike Tyson, as as scary and as as tough as he is, would like romance films. <laughs> so that's something new, right? I did want to talk about here um, that I'm officially on Apple Podcast. I, that's part of my intro now. Uh, I finally did it. I'm on a, I'm on Apple Podcast. It took me what a, it took me a month to finally get to it, all because I did not have a description for my podcast. I did do I did edit that in SoundCloud, and then I had to um, send my RSS feed over, and then it was it had to, it had to be like updated, and it had to uh, um, they had to like verify my account. And it took a month to do it. So for those of you who are trying to do podcasts on your own, here are some tips. Make sure that if you do use, I'm using my stuff through SoundCloud. If you have SoundCloud, make sure you edit your uh, your titles good. Uh, make sure that you set your like your your settings to where do you have like music playing. Set it to no. Um, and also make sure that you have it like connected to your RSS feed for updates. Um, you'll be able to see those options to fix once you upload your your uh, your, your audio onto SoundCloud. Um, also, make sure that you have a description. Um, I kept mine very brief. Um, you can see that on the Apple Podcast description or on my SoundCloud description. It's just what I talk about normally on my podcast. Um, so yeah, make sure for those of you who do who do want to for those of you who do want to attempt to make a podcast. Um, kind of just touch up on that and look up on YouTube and stuff. Um, don't make the mistakes that I did and get upset over something small like that. Um, again, shout out to Hassa and shout out to Street Kings World Ice Cream um, for partaking and like exchanging information and just uh, you know taking time to to know what to to uh, understand and to know what I was doing with my podcast too. Um, yeah, and you know that's pretty much what I. Uh, pretty much did for the past couple of weeks i know that with these interviews or at least with my guests that um it does take away from what i want to talk about originally with my podcast and um yeah it's um hopefully i get back into reading more to my comic books and that way i can that way i can go into more detail about what i want to talk about talk about with my podcast uh, but at the same time i want to keep I, I want to keep it you know real and not like sound so fa- fabricated with how i talk about my anime and comic books and uh what i'm reading and watching and what i'm doing i don't want to sound fabricated at all so i will be honest about most of the most of these things um and again yeah uh i I, again i do want to just um preview that my next guest is my co-worker and i sit next to him literally he was a battle rapper he uh he performed in downtown detroit at the shelter before he performed in ferndale he was actually in a studio in Ferndale where like Aretha Franklin sang at, where Tupac uh, recorded at. We will get into all that information. Um, uh, he He's Cuban. I make that point out because he doesn't look Cuban at all until like you really look at him. Um, but man, the, the guy has great talent. I'll, um, I, think, I believe I shared his music before uh, on my personal Facebook page. But um, if you'd like, I can... Uh, 
if you're interested in hearing his music, you can message Poplug Podcast on Facebook or Poplug Podcast at gmail.com. And uh, if you do email us or message us on Poplug Podcast, please give us like your suggestions, thoughts, criticisms, comments, whatever it is that you want to tell us, even if it's something rude. Um, message us or email mail, email us at poplugpodcast at gmail.com or at poplugpodcast on Facebook. And um, you can also contact us on Instagram. That's all, I always post up our tags or like our, our Instagram tags on the descriptions as well. You can follow us there. Follow Mark. Follow Andrew. Um, Andrew is not too active on Instagram, but he's more active on Facebook. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you who do listen to my uh, podcast know like or are friends with Andrew mutually. Um, but if not, then you can always just search up Andrew Lee and you'll see that in his uh, information, he manages pop up podcast. And that's the Andrew Lee that uh, is a part of our group. Um, yeah, it's a, uh, it's great to just, you know, to continue to do this podcast. And uh, I, again, I appreciate everyone who took their time today to just understand what I'm trying to do here. And, you know, um, I know that there's tons of other Hmong people who are podcasting too. Um, I, I, I just want to do something that's different. Um, I don't think, at least from what I understand and who I know, I don't think there's many Hmong podcasters in Michigan. And if there are, please contact me because I would love to be a guest on your show and share my information with you or at least we'll share what I know and what I like about on on your show and vice versa. Uh, we can work together and just support each other. Because really, with what I'm trying to do with my podcast overall, is just my goal is to just help support other groups and other entertainment or like other businesses that, especially in the Hmong community, it was never something I was really a part of growing up. And uh, I'm just trying to, um, you know, just show that being in a podcast or being or having nerdy culture really is it's something that's not different you know you can still do this stuff and look semi cool (laughs) i was never cool growing up but like you know it's not something that's nerdy or it's not something that's like only geeks do that i I want to show that you know anyone can do this and it's really easy um and even though i don't have much experience in this i I do want to just share what i think and what my thoughts are and uh it's a great way to just kind of you know let loose and to just um, you know, talk about things that no one wants to talk to you about or talk about things that you have no one to talk to you about as well. I mean, this is mostly why I'm doing podcasts because I don't have anyone to really talk about my, what, how I uh, think about certain movies or anime or comic books as well. And um, having guests in the show, it's a great way to just make new friends and to understand people more. Again, I've I've said this before, it's very therapeutic to talk about this stuff and you know, podcasts itself is growing to a more credible news source than the real news sources. Everyone likes podcasts now. Everyone from like Ryan Higa's doing one, uh David So's doing one, Wong Fu, I think Wong Fu was doing a mukbang version of it. It's still considered a podcast, but they're just eating. Um Joe Rogan, uh, come on, come on, he's like one of the biggest podcasters in the world. Thirteen hundred plus ep- uh, episodes, that's insane. And I've been listening to him a lot too, and it's insane. So definitely check out his latest episode. I think one of them was the Bob Lazar one. I'm not too into conspiracies or U- or UFOs and stuff like that. I mean, I like listening to it, but um, I'll probably touch up on that too with my uh, next guest too next weekend. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this was great. Uh, I I know I ramble a lot quite a bit in this episode and there's you know distractions and stuff like that um but if you made it this far and listened to it this far thank you so much and uh, if you enjoyed my content continue to share it um you can share sound my soundcloud or apple's podcast links that i always post um share public podcast uh you know and like the page as well um and follow us um you know because it's 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 a great thing to always just support anyone really. And, you know, at the end of the day, doing this podcast is not about like trying to make a name or trying to make money or anything. Um, I think it's, I think it's for me, it's just a great way to just let go and to just, it's a great stress reliever. Again, like, like I said, it's, it's very therapeutic and I, and I, I like to get my point of view out there as well. 
Um, so if you made it this far, thank you for listening. Um, this has been a great day so far. I had a great day. Um, tomorrow, I'm most likely going to be back at the United uh, Moan Sports Tournament and Festival, handing out the rest of my my free prizes. Um, answer my and for those who want to attempt to answer my questions, go ahead. There's there honestly, you get it right or wrong, you still win a prize. It's a win win. The reason why I ask those questions is because the more the more you get right, the more you get to look into the prizes and pick out the better ones. And please, if someone can just, <laughs> I want to meet someone who who would actually like know who like who Yaya Han is, and who would actually want that prize. Surprisingly, I thought that would be I thought today was going to be where people wanted that one, but no, everyone wanted Funko Pops. Um, so that's a, that's a new one for me. Um, it's most likely because I'm more of a comic book collector than I am a Funko Pop collector. Um, but yeah, but this is, uh, this has been a great day. Uh, thank you for listening. Um, again, share my content and, uh, shout out again, shout out to, uh, Hassa and shout out to, uh, Street Kings Rolled Ice Cream. Um, thank you for, uh, thank you to the people who participated today in my little experiment and, uh, yeah, this has been a great day. Um, so my name is Ricky. Thank you for listening to the first podcast. Read your comic books, watch your anime, and uh, have a great day. If you enjoyed this episode, follow my Instagram at rickyvang92, R-I-C-K-Y-V-A-N-G, 92, and follow Pop Luck Podcast on Facebook.com slash Pop Luck Podcast.